characteristics in the crypto landscape right now is people buying things and then all of their opinions are grounded in their own self-financial interest. That's how you have a bad reputation. That's how you are not historically correct. This is gonna be a game of and. There's a gentleman by the name of Aaron Battalion, uh, was one of the co-founders of Living Social. He's a VC, really strong CTO, and in a hotel room at South by Southwest in 2015 or 14, I think 14 actually, now thinking about the email I found recently, uh, he and others explained Bitcoin. And they were like, and I was, it was like so like outer space. I was so confident in my ability of understanding consumer technology that I really even struggled with like, man, why does this doesn't even click at all? And I kind of dismissed it as because I don't love finance, I don't love financial arbitrage, I don't really even understand basic financial concepts. So I kind of sat literally the next year at South by again, because we used to jam and do this thing. They, he brought up Ethereum. He's like, remember last year we talked about this? Now look at this. And that one clicked because I understood the developers on top of it. At that point, I picked up on a little bit more. So it was really then I bought, I bought a bunch of ETH for like six cents. You know, and I was like, okay, this is something that's intriguing. Let me put it over here and keep an eye on it. Crypto Kitties came out the next year. That caught my attention, but I didn't go deep but I was aware that something had happened where people collected something digital. And then it was last summer when I sat down, Fred Wilson, very successful VC, reached out and connected me to Roham, founder of Dapper Labs, and he showed me what NBA Top Shot was gonna be in the fall, and that really caught my attention, and I was like, okay, this is starting to get really interesting, but I was navigating VaynerX through COVID, and I was busier than ever, 15 hours a day, operating my company, so I said, in the winter, during the holidays, last December, I'll really do homework on this. I'll spend 50 hours, I'll really go there. Top Shot exploded in September, I missed my window to go crazy there, then Kevin Rose, the founder of Dig.com, really the face of Web 2.0 before social popped, said something in a conversation with me in December of, we were talking about X-Men comics and Jordan rookies, and he's like, do you have a crypto punk? And I was like, what's that? And that led me down a huge path, which culminated with, in early January, me saying, oh my God, this is here. Stood up, I know I'm off screen right now, stood up and said, oh my God, the same way I did in 1994 when I saw the internet and the same way that I decided that I had to go from being a wine retailer to a content social media executor because this YouTube, Twitter thing I'm seeing on the face of what I saw on Friendster and MySpace was gonna change the internet. So this was the third moment and it was January when I had my Eureka. So it's interesting, I hadn't heard you say before that you know you first heard about Bitcoin, didn't really get it, or it didn't really click, then it was Ethereum. Now I have to ask, do you think of yourself as an Ethereum, I might say maxi, that's a term in the industry, Ethereum maximalist, they say forget Bitcoin, all the potential for business applications is Ethereum, or have you now gone back and do you also own Bitcoin? I bought Bitcoin back then, so that did really well. Um, uh, no, I'm a, I'm a big believer in and. I'm, I think the worst, one of the worst characteristics in the crypto landscape right now is people buying things and then all of their opinions are grounded in their own self-financial interest. That's how you have a bad reputation. That's how you are not historically correct. This is gonna be a game of and, to be a game of and. I, back to December, how I use it, I can't wait to go very deep into Solana this December holiday season to understand what I think in comparison to Immutable X and Layer 2 versus an ETH mainnet. No, I think it's insane to think this is a zero-sum game. I think that there will be many platforms, probably, I have a much better understanding of the human psychology around NFTs than I do around the financial aspect of coins. So I don't, as you probably know, because I know you watch the space carefully, I don't talk a lot about Bitcoin or the alternative currencies because I really don't understand that game. I very much understand why people wear Nikes, Rolexes, buy Mercedes-Benz, communication, human behavior, and that's why I'm so very focused on NFTs because I think they represent social communication in a way that other things come natural to me and that's where my focus is. Well, and really now crypto punks arguably becoming, some might say bored apes, I mean, pick your collection, the example of those highest 
you know, tier in the NFT world. But yeah. that's going to keep changing. I mean, yeah, and I think some like my bet is that what I bet on because I bought a bunch of CryptoPunks and I, and I believe it even more now watching this year play out, some things will be Tiffany's like locked and loaded for hundreds of years. X copy, sh- the artist, shows all the nuances of potentially becoming a Warhol or a Banksy or a Pollock. Um, so somebody's gonna win that game. Bored Ape, V Friends, Cool Cats, I think a lot of those brands are gonna play the brand game. So Supreme is hot for seven years, but it's hard to be hot for 50 years, yep. right? So there's gonna be a classics, and there's gonna be the hot brand, wow. and there's a lot to think through, um, and I'm spending a lot of time on it. You know, I'm not overtly, and, and that's not audacious, it's I don't really understand the concept of trying to convince people to see the world the way you see it which as you know makes me an anomaly because that's where the world is in a high passion right now, convincing. I try to stay in conviction. I know that there's plenty of people that think I'm Walt Disney and I think there's people that think I'm a snake oil salesman. My plan is to execute and let the market and the truth win and so I don't say anything. I'm actually incredibly empathetic to people that don't think my stuff's right. Look. I mean, the first time we met, you wrote an article mm-hmm. that's titled, Is Gary V for Real? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm, but I'm, I'm empathetic to it. I understand. I have, I have a personality trait that, you know, for many people, especially in a quick snippet in an Instagram post or a LinkedIn post, can really throw one off. I'm empathetic. I'm also incredibly aware of who I am and what I plan to do. And my plan with Friends is to make Patient Panda as famous as Pikachu. It is to make, you know, Empathy Elephant as famous as Scooby-Doo. And either I'm gonna have the talent to do it or I'm not, but that is what I'm up to. And if I'm successful, well then the NFTs and the art that sold at Christie's was a steal. If I'm not successful, well then it will be Beanie Babies. There's a variable difference oh. between it. And so I, I plan on not ruining my reputation with friends, and so I say nothing to them. Let's ask the NFT skeptic question differently. Forget just your own collection, but there are a lot of people out there who still can't really wrap their minds around the NFT boom in general. And you say, look, they're non-fungible tokens. These are tokens. They're like cryptocurrencies, but they're not currencies, but they're on blockchain. And you can point to this and say, see, I own this. Now, someone else can share it. They could tweet out a screenshot of it, fine. But they don't own it. Only you own it and can move it. And still... It's just, they hit a wall. What do you say to people? I'm sure you've had friends say, wait a minute, dude, I I just don't get this stuff. Well, through my friends, I usually say, remember when you were wrong about social media? Remember when you were wrong about the internet? Remember when you told me you would never trade in your Blackberry for an iPhone? I tell them all the things that we've done for the last 20 years where they said no and I said maybe and they've been unbelievably wrong and have had to conform to the way the world worked out. That's what I say to my friends. What do I say to people that I'm randomly interacting with? The same thing that I answered my own collection on. When people, <laughs> you've brought up twice, so it's obviously struck a chord with you and many others in this space. I can just right click it. I can go outside right now and take a picture of this hotel and say it's mine. I could. Many people do take a photo with a car, like a Lamborghini, and try to make the assumption that it's theirs. Who Pl- would do that? Plenty of people do wear fake Rolexes. I understand the concept. Look, we've had 25 years of an internet where people don't own things digitally. We have a new invention, it's called a blockchain, where people do own things digitally. Every person that's watching this right now that is lucky enough to be alive in 15 years will own multiple things digitally. The end. And this behavior's been going on. People bought sheep on Farmville and Facebook a decade ago. (laughs) Everybody who, by the way, the winning you mean argument. Meta. Yeah, meta, thank you. The winning argument, by the way, over a cocktail is, and usually I, at this point I have no patience for this conversation in like I want to get to other topics, but every acquaintance and friend wants to talk to me about it because yeah. it's a wild topic. I basically, within the first five minutes, ask them if their child has bought Roblox or Minecraft or Fortnite skins. The answer is yes, and the argument or debate or conversation ends pretty much within the first four to five minutes. Our inherent need as human beings, as animals, to communicate with each other is extraordinary. 
everybody I'm looking at right now and behind the camera is literally wearing the clothes they're wearing as a subconscious way to communicate to the world. The haircut. We, everything we do is to communicate with each other as we inherently live more digital. Forget about the metaverse, Ready Player One. We live in the metaverse now. People are in their screens constantly. Why does, I had somebody who's like obsessed with their personal brand, like shit on NFTs, and I asked them why they wanted a blue check mark. That's not real, but of course it's real. It's status, mm. it's communication, and so, you know, this is gonna play out the same way that everybody said the internet was a fad. Here's where it's really interesting. This is a boring convo right now. Oh. It's a, not, not you personally, the macro. The conversation's about to get very interesting when we hit an NFT winter because there's way too much short-term greed and supply and demand issues, and when the whole market crashes, and everybody says, see? I mean, I can't wait. Which has already happened in a mini sense twice. And everyone says, see, NFTs are dead, NFTs are dead. There's gonna be a real one, I think, based on what I'm seeing. And Yahoo Finance is gonna write, are NFTs a fad, question mark? And the Journal, and the Times, and everybody's gonna write the article. And that's when it's gonna be interesting because the person on the other side is gonna be like, Gary, look, you look, the punks are now worth 30,000, they were mm. 800,000, and I'm gonna say, here, look at this chart on Yahoo Finance that shows you Amazon stock, and look what happened in 2000, March, April, when the whole internet craze crashed. Yes, everything got caught up in that undercurrent because yes, greed, short-term financial interest, overvalued everything, short-term behavior overvalued everything, it got washed, and this was the time to buy Amazon and eBay because those were real companies. I do believe firmly that 98% of the NFT projects right now's values will be less than that when it's all said and done. The problem is the 2% are gonna be so much more extraordinarily mm. high that one is required to do the homework to see the opportunity. Well,